Ah yes, 2020. A year to remember for some, and for others, a year to forget. The footage that you see in front of you was taken January the 1st, 2020, at Shibuya Tokyo, New Year's Day. For the next couple of minutes, I'll be breaking down how the culture of Japan has played a part in my artistry and lifestyle, and just talking about the process and the story behind the photos. Japan, aka the land of the rising sun, filled with rich history and tradition, the home for anime plus manga, the technological development that constantly pushes the boundaries of the possible, Japan also has the finest and most varied cuisines in the world, entertainment, whether it's traditional or contemporary, exquisite scenery, and finally, most importantly, the people of Japan. In my opinion, I feel like the people of Japan is what makes Japan what it is today. The current population of Japan is currently over 126 million, based on 75% of whom live in urban areas like Tokyo, Yokohama, Kawasaki, um, Osaka, and Nagoya. So growing up, I got into many anime, manga and films. Um, whenever I watch anime or movies based in Japan, I always find myself obsessed with Japanese aesthetics, um, whether it's the cityscape and landscapes or just the culture in general. Um, yeah, I just find myself being obsessed with it. I would also listen to many original soundtracks from video games like Final Fantasy, Tekken, Street Fighter, Zelda and Pokemon. Um, every time I check who composed the tracks, I always get fascinated <laughs> by the fact that these composers are from Japan. It was also when I got into listening to the jazz band Hiroshima. Um, Jun Kuromoto, who is known for playing the koto, um, totally blew me away. Um, just the way she was able to play the instrument um, what she was able to do alongside the jazz band was amazing. Um, I always felt like the koto was a very dull instrument until she played it. And uh, I think at that point I said to myself, this could be uh, my niche, you know, um, whether it's from the sound or just their stacks in general, I felt like this could be my niche. So with all the influences, um, there was one thing missing and that was going to Japan. Um, going to Japan for the first time as I peeped through the window and stepped out of the plane, just breathing the hot air, um, I felt like a kid. It's like collecting Pokemon cards and you want that shiny Charizard card, and you get it, you end up being excited. Um, and that's how I felt. I think um, entering Japan for the first time, it's like anime, but real life. Um, I took so much from the simple things like respect, manners, eating good, looking after yourself health-wise, keeping things minimal slash clean, plus taking the time to direct someone where they need to go. Um, and then finally, just staying in Japan for an extended time enhanced my music. Um, I think when I was taking photos while listening to music, it changes my approach when it comes to sketching out beats. My music is influenced by what I see, um, Music and image complement each other, which makes a visualizer. So 
So my go-to camera is the Fuji Film X-T3 digital camera. Um, it pretty much does everything for me. Um, I can record video and take photos. The image quality is pretty impressive, especially at low ISO. You can cook your own film simulation recipes so you don't have to do that much tweaking in Lightroom. Um, when it comes to overall colors and skin tones, the X-T3 just doesn't disappoint. <laughs> um, finally, in terms of the size, it's not too big or small. It's just about the right size to carry around with you. So starting off with the colored book, um, the film simulation I found myself using was the classic Chrome. Um, as you can see with this film simulation, it can create um, soft colors and enhanced shadow contrast, which gives these uh, images a serene look. Um, I did do a little bit of tweaking on Lightroom because I like my photos to have a high contrast of saturated colors. But also I did find myself doing some experimenting um, with other presets um, within Lightroom just to see what works or not. Um, two photographers I look at for reference and who I look up to, um, Joshua K. Jackson and uh, Liam Wong. As for the black and white edition, uh, the film simulation I found myself using was the Acros film. Um, this film simulation has outstanding sharpness. I think it's good at exposing minor details in a person's face, but also it brings some sort of softness to the photos. Um, this film simulation is also good at creating moody landscape photos as well. Um, when I first started shooting, I was a little bit timid, only because whenever I take shots of people, I find that people start staring at me. Um, I have ways of sneaking in good shots, but before I would find myself taking photos behind their back. I've gotten used to it. It's now become like a trademark shot. Um, when I look at these images, what I take out from this, I find that these shots tend to be mysterious. Um, there is a bit of a melancholic mood to some of these photos, um, especially the shot with the taxi driver who's looking quite wistful in this shot, which is one of my faves. Uh, my other phase were the umbrella shots. Um, I think those shots create so much mystery. When it came to editing in Lightroom, I found myself adjusting the whites, blacks, highlights, and contrasts. Um, the idea was to go for a noir, moody look to some of these photos. I also did some experimenting as well, um, playing around with the PX100 Polaroid film preset. And <laughs> boy oh boy, when I tell you, I started screaming like a chihuahua. Um, woke up my neighbor at 1 a.m. She was like, can you turn the noise down? I was like, sorry, auntie. Um, but in all seriousness, I was like, I, I, I feel like I get a sense of warmth to some of these shots. It just feels like, it just, it just looks so smooth. You know, um, two notable photographers I looked at for reference that I also look up to was Tatsuo Suzuki and uh, the legendary Funho. So how do these two books resonate with me, you may ask? Well, to me, I feel like both versions of the book represents my characteristics at times, highs and lows. Um, the book could also apply to Japan. With um, every country you go to, you have the good side, but also its issues, the bad side. Um, so in a way, to me, this book represents that. Overall, this book shows my appreciation for the country. It's like an ode to Japan. Um, <laughs> God willing, I look forward to going back again. Um, I think when I wake up in London, it feels like it was just a dream. Just a dream. Just a dream. Just a dream. Just a dream.